thing I'm going to talk about. Like I alluded to, we got some crazy oligarchs in Russia going at it. Um, this story here is from CNN. I'm going to read a lot of it. it it's, it's not a bad story. I give CNN some credit. They're not the dog shit media company. They're uh, online. Sometimes when they write stuff as they are on television. So this article is not bad. Um, I can't really discern too much left leaning, but here, here goes. So it says Moscow has stepped back from civil war with, with Wagner. If you don't know who Wagner is, I'll give you a very quick synopsis of what Wagner is. They're basically a mercenary company, um, that Russia uses for bullshit stuff that they do around the world. They're almost like a CIA for the, Ru for the Russians, only different. Not, not a great explanation, I suppose. Um, there's a, they're like 50,000 strong. So they're, they're an army to themselves. So this was a, kind of a big deal them marching on, uh, on Russia, or it could just be, just could be lies too. This might just be some kind of propaganda thing. Who knows? I mean, it, it ended just as fast as it started. So here we go. Uh, Russia glimpsed the threat of armed Armed insurrection over the weekend with Wagner Group mercenaries marching toward Moscow as President Putin vowed retribution, all before a sudden deal seemed to diffuse the crisis as rapidly as it emerged. The immediate risk of bloodshed appears to have been dis uh, have dissipated, but much remains uncertain. Putin must now navigate the aftermath of the most serious challenge to his authority since he came to power over 20 years ago. Uh, the fate of Wagner Chief uh, Yevgeny uh, Prigozhin who led the provocative march and seizure of cities along the way remains murky. So basically there was a deal brokered. I guess he drew it off to Belarus, apparently. And uh, now they don't know what's going to necessarily happen. And Russia is, is supposed to absorb this mercenary army of the Wagner group. Again, I don't know. It, uh, it seems like it, it was this big coup d'etat that was happening and then suddenly just just as fast as it heated up it died so i don't know if this was just a kind of an exercise or a or who knows these guys were friends at one point uh this progosian and and uh, vladimir putin apparently back in the day he's one of these oligarchs right so they're all in, in bed with each other figuratively not liter literally well maybe literally uh that would just be my opinion uh, okay, according to the deal described by the Kremlin and Belarusian government, uh, Prigozhin has agreed to leave Russia for neighboring Belarus. Uh, so they don't know where he is right now. Belarusian officials told CNN on Sunday that they had no details on what Prigozhin's status would be in Belarus and could not confirm whether he had already arrived in the country. Uh, a Kremlin spokesman also said that a criminal case against Prigozhin for the rebellion will be dropped. So, okay. So basically, he's getting away with this. But... Uh, there's still the idea that maybe he's not getting away with it. Um, again, this is all so so weird. It's it, it looked like it was going to be this massive thing that could bring down the Russian government and then bring up uh, instability. And people were afraid that obviously, if that were if the Russian government would be challenged, Putin might like a cat backed into a corner might start using his nuclear arsenal. Um, none of that happened. So. I don't know. Um, as with all of this, it, it's like a lot of it just keeps getting blown up and nothing seems to happen from it. So this is one of those stories that uh, we'll, we'll find out more and more as we go. But I, I just get the it's, it doesn't pass the sniff test for me. Something seems a little fishy on it. So could have been just a uh, could have been a Russian this could have been staged essentially sort of a Russian stage on this to, uh, who knows? I can't even speculate what the reasons would be, but it just screams a little weird to me.